I think we'll start this out with an example of what the hell of change is you're going to have a task. Underwater by the function. Qualifier. Yeah, right. we might be wrong. Well, in order to understand that, we need to have a nice picture. So which kind of level do you want? So now I can no longer get to my boogers. Ethics 101. Here we go. All right, everyone. Welcome to the ethics portion of your RBT. You're almost done. It's going to be great. So here's some basic rules over being a behaviorist and how not to screw things up, as the title suggests. Um, so we're going to go over some things that you should know about ethics. And what are they really? What do they look like? What do they sound like? What do they taste like? We're just going to go over the entire thing um, and how you probably shouldn't use web WebMD for a lot of these uh, points. What you have to remember is that everything uh, is kind of in your hands. You can't escape adulting anymore. You're going to run into a lot of situations where you need to be aware of these particular points and uh, potentially how to deal and walk through them. So things we're going to cover are things like how we're aim going to aim to not do any harm, uh, respecting autonomy of our clients, how to uh, make goals for benefiting to others, being just, a pursuit of excellence, and accepting responsibility. So, cool. So the first one is going to be doing no harm. So, what do you mean? <laughs> right? So one of those is the area of expertise. So a big thing about becoming a behavior analyst is that everyone gets super excited and we go out into the real world and you just start practicing what you've just been taught. Slow down a little bit, take your time, and we got to essentially know your role and shut your mouth. So what we're going to do is find that small box that we've been working in and polish those skills, but make sure we have appropriate training and supervision to continue forward with anything. So what that would look like, for instance, is in our, be, finishing your RBT does not mean you can start a caseload. There's so much more to learn and school and hours to finish that we're just not ready for that. And the same thing can go with BCBAs. If they've been working with kids one to four or a particular age range, they should be doing the same kind of thing. They need to go find the correct supervision and uh, training and consultation to continue to um, do things well. So staying within your area of expertise is crucial because there are certain situations and scenarios where you're not trained and you may not be dealing with them appropriately. So the second one we wanted to go to to make sure we're not doing any harm is data systems. This is absolutely key. Uh, this is usually making sure our measurements are just to the behaviors we're looking for. So as you just learned, for instance, if you have a high rate response over a duration response, uh, making sure that our measurements are both accurate on what we're talking about, our definitions are clear, and that that particular measurement piece is all about um, tracking that response appropriately. So the last part of doing no harm is having to work with other professionals, uh, especially in an RBT position. Uh, if you're like in a clinic scenario or potentially an in-home uh, place going on an outing, you're going to run into other professionals, doctors, uh, occupational therapists, speech therapists. It's going to be about becoming collaborative in our approach with these other professionals. Sometimes they're going to have opposing viewpoints um, of what you've been taught, but because of only what you know at the moment, we'll be able to kind of um, share what we know, collaborate with them, and if you're having concerns, you stay within your expertise, funny how that shows up again, and um, contact your BCBA if you're wondering about some questions of uh, what they're doing. Okay, so the second point we wanted to bring up was respecting autonomy, Independence Day! Bad joke, I'm sorry. So, respecting autonomy is about essentially the prime philosophy of ABA. It's all about getting an individual to become independent. How do we teach these kids how to communicate? How can we get them to uh, learn how to use the toilet, maybe how to walk. Just generally trying to get kids uh, to move forward with any skills where they're not having a parent chase them down for every little thing or having their hand held through hand washing or cleaning their bedroom or constantly being able to be reminded to finish um, certain tasks. Everything we're going to do through prompt fading, reinforcement, and the structures of how we chain things and just essentially teach them is going to be about increasing their independence and self-sufficiency. It's important to think about the independence to harm type of idea though. 
because just because you can increase their independence does not mean it's necessarily a great idea. And it's something to be aware of. Uh, for instance, uh, I've had a lot of parents be like, this kid should totally go learn to ride a bike because it's age appropriate and developmentally appropriate. And I'm at the other table, other end of the table going, you're absolutely correct. This kid should be riding a bike. But the problem I have is, can he come back if you ask him to, or stop when you want him to, or does he know his name, address, and parents' names and be able to um, reliably tell those on command? Uh, because if we learn to ride a bike and get lost, or we don't stop riding a bike, then it's really important to make sure that those things are happening. Um, so that kind of is a great example of that independence piece and how, although we're promoting independence and that's our ethical responsibility, we have to be careful about what um, we're promoting and making sure that all the other associated skills for that independence is a solid foundation so they're not lost at Walmart or <laughs> parents are like, thank you for teaching us how to ride a bike and we never seen him again. But we know he's somewhere doing great. Independence and reason um, is one of the last ethical considerations. And this is kind of, we're promoting these, the independence of the individual. Awesome. We're making sure that the skills we teach have solid foundations and all other associated skills surrounding that idea are solid. So this person's just doing great. They're moving along in life just fine. The last part is, will this person or this uh, client, do we need to continue to push them into certain skills or should we hold off because of certain developmental um, considerations or maybe some physical um, limitations where we shouldn't be pushing them into <laughs> becoming independent with a set of skills that is potentially dangerous for them. So uh, for instance, if we're teaching the kid to, we'll go back to the bike, if we're teaching them to ride the bike, we taught them all the safety skills surrounded around riding a bike. Uh, if there's mobility concerns and balance concerns, is that really a great goal to overall be working uh, because of the um, how it could jeopardize their safety and their health uh, with riding a bike.